Hello and welcome to Life Stories Markham. Life Stories is a channel devoted to providing our audience with a deeper understanding of the individual behind the public persona. I'm your host, Michael Heap, and I'm joined by my co-host, Nilash Hathi, in the control room. On this channel, Nilash and I will delve into the life story of Markham residents who are known in a field of work or by their passion. If you're watching on YouTube or listening to our podcast, please subscribe so that you can don't miss an episode. In this episode of Life Stories Markham, we welcome Nikki Trekos. Now, Nikki is a fellow curler, accomplished artist, and an author. Nikki, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Well, it's great to have you, Nikki. And as Neelesh mentioned, we know you as a fellow curler. And why don't you start by telling us when did you decide to start curling and why did you get into the sport? Sure. Um, about two years ago, my husband and I had the fortunate opportunity of enjoying what felt like being empty nesters. <laughs> but our kids uh, were in university and we really sort of enjoyed our next chapter with having all this free time and wanting to have some new fun experiences, maybe knock a few things off of our bucket list. And I thought, wouldn't it be great to try curling, especially since we could walk to the curling club. <laughs> it offered us an opportunity to be a little bit active and social. And it also meant that we weren't going to have all this extra free time that really is, it's, it's a lot of quiet time when the kids are gone. <laughs> right. And has it met your expectations from a curling club? Yeah, I, I think it's even surpassed it. I really didn't know what to expect. I had curled once, you know, sort of that corporate experience where you all get together, have beers and curl, right. but I really enjoyed it and I knew that it wasn't anything that was um, really strenuous or the expectations of being able to curl, like I didn't feel like the pressure was going to be there. Um, and then when we joined the club, we did a learn to curl and met just a warm group of people and there were so many people that had their own stories with why they curled or how long they'd been curling that it just, it was really inspiring. So Excellent. we enjoyed it. We, we weren't too bad at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Only fell a couple of times. Great, great. Well, Nikki, we know there's a lot more to you than just being a curler and enjoying curling. And in fact, we have a piece of your work behind you, yes. uh, a piece of artwork. The people watching will be able to see it. But maybe uh, for everybody watching and listening, maybe you can describe the piece that uh, is behind you. Yeah, so the piece that's behind me is called Through the Trees. It's actually um, a gicle print of an original watercolor painting that I did. And I'm really inspired by nature and our travels and um, sort of being in a moment where I'm in awe by what I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to try to capture it with my artwork. So um, I'm really happy to be being able to offer these gicle prints mm -hmm. as an option for um, someone to experience my art. Excellent. Well, yeah. you've done a great job. You've Thank captured you. it very well. Um, so let's go back a few years, okay. Nikki, into, into your story. So um, you started out working in the corporate world. Yes. And then, um, and then now you're working as an artist. Yes. So that's quite a pivot between those two worlds. Maybe you can take us through how you got from one world to the other. Yeah, for sure. So I've always been artistic, um, but have never, well, growing up as a child, never really knew what it was like to be an artist or a working artist or even if that that would be possible. Um, my parents are immigrants from Greece and they're very hardworking and conservative, practical, and they always taught us to get a good job and, you know, look for something that will offer you a pension and get married and have kids and that whole experience. So there wasn't ever anyone really in my circle that um, was creative or in that field. So. Art was something that I was good at, that I enjoyed doing, but something that I just did for fun as a hobby. Sure, sure. So what, would, what was your first job within the artistic realm? Um, so I actually am an entrepreneur at heart. So I actually started Life I Design, which is my art-based business. Mm -hmm. um, oh no, actually, I guess it would be the makeup. I'll have to rewind a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> story there so always finding moments to be creative I think was just something that I looked for mm -hmm. and not even realizing that I was expressing my artistic side so yeah. whether it was through cooking or you know sewing curtains for our new house or I would even get charcoal and paint murals I don't know if my husband remembers <laughs> that I had this 
woman sort of abstractedly painted on the wall. Um, and then I was trying to get pregnant with my son. I was working corporate, um, you know, things were challenging and I thought, wouldn't it be fun to just take a makeup class and get my mind off of not being able to get pregnant. Mm. And suddenly I found myself in a makeup class, pregnant with my first <laughs> and really loving the fact that I was experiencing an artistic side of me through, I could paint on women's faces and wash it all off at the end of the mm. day and expressing that side of my creativity. Wow. So I guess that was my first job sure. um, as an artist. Okay. So Nikki, what's it like? I'm from an immigrant family. What's it like when uh, you move to the artistic world? How do your parents take, take it? How do they react? Well, my parents are really supportive, um, but they've never really understood what my job is, especially working from home and being an entrepreneur. So when I did makeup, they got it. They knew that I would go um, to a client's house or if I was doing um, production work or photo shoot that I would do makeup and then I would come home. So they understood that because that was similar to, in their eyes, like a hairdresser or something like a service. When I started Life by Design, that was different because there were so many facets to what I did as an artist that they were um, encouraging and supportive. And when they saw the art that I was making, they understood a little bit more, but they didn't quite get it. Like It was almost like they didn't feel that it was um, a real job that could support us. Um, so yeah, but they were always supportive. And what I'd love to do is just demystify the whole like starving artist persona and, you know, the world that we live in now with technology mm -hmm. and like we can we have a global reach there's so much opportunity that you can do anything in a creative artistic field really it's just how how far can you dream or how big can you dream right right, right. And i think it's wonderful that your parents even though maybe they didn't understand what mm -hmm. you were doing at the same time they supported you mm -hmm. in your endeavors and i think you're very fortunate to have that kind of uh, background to be able to, to yeah, be there for you absolutely yeah um, so, so you mentioned you were a makeup artist, mm -hmm. and then is when you later started Life I Design. Yes, um, I believe that was in twenty twelve. Yeah, in twenty twelve. Yeah, right. And so you you jump full time now into Life I Design. Yeah, and uh, maybe you can tell us the kinds of things that you were doing at that point. Sure. So um, I had a really full makeup career, and it was during the time when my kids were young. Um, my husband was focused on his job and traveling a lot and being able to do makeup meant that I could be out of the house a little bit, have a break from the kids, mm -hmm. kids could have a break from me and still be able to contribute to the household. But that meant a lot of weekends being at weddings, um, especially summertime when really I just mm -hmm. wanted to be with the family and enjoy moments together, the four of us. So I probably was in year 13 of my makeup artistry freelance career or business and I realized I just needed a change. I was getting tired. I mm -hmm. wanted to spend more time with the kids, especially as they were getting older. Right. I felt like I just needed to be there for them more and enjoy the fun moments, not just the parenting <laughs> moments. Right. Um, so I said to my husband, John, who is another very supportive person in my life that I think has also been encouraging and um, a big reason why I've been able to kind of make that jump in that moment. I just said, I just want to try to be an artist. We were actually watching, this is a funny story, Neilish, you might appreciate this too. Um, we were watching a show called Top Gear, and it was the American version. So there's three guys who drive cars around, have these amazing adventures, and it's really fun. And I remember watching an episode, we're all watching it together, and I thought, wow, I bet they didn't grow up thinking, I'm going to one day have a car show, and I'm going to you know, have all these adventures and have this great life. But you know, this opportunity came into their lives and they were able to have this fun experience. So I thought, what would I do if money weren't an object, if I could do anything, you know, what would it be? And it's always been to be an artist, to see what that feels like and what that looks like. Mm -hmm. So I had no idea <laughs> what I was going to do, but I knew I wanted to create this life that I designed, not, you know, what my parents wanted me to do or what, you know, was expected of me or what we had to do. Um, and I said to my husband, I feel like I just need a six month sabbatical where I can teach myself maybe how to design my website and take an art class and maybe do some graphic design. So that's what I did. I fell in deep. And it, was, <laughs> it was an interesting journey. I cursed a lot, <laughs> learned a lot and um, had some fun successes along right. the way. So Nikki, this comes from your website, from your about section. It says the first line is, be fearless in the pursuit of what sets your soul on fire. 
Where does that come from? What does that mean to you? So that is actually a quote that um, I hand lettered years ago. So when I first started Life by Design, I really loved calligraphy and lettering. And um, I am a firm believer in words have power, and especially statements that you you feel or you embody um, the words that you're reading or the words mm -hmm. that that are in front of you. So to be fearless in a pursuit of something that maybe is unknown, something as new, I think is um, a feeling I hope that everyone sort of comes across in their life at some point. So it's just not worrying about what's gonna happen, be fearless in whatever it is that you want to do and whatever happens will happen and know that you'll be okay, right? Just as long as you have the passion. And do you feel that you've been able, have you been able to embody that statement yourself? Yeah, I say yes a lot. I'm thinking, holy And it's true like I launch a website when I'm not ready I launch new artwork when I'm not ready I teach a class when I'm not ready if you wait until you're ready you're gonna be waiting your whole life so you do it do it scared as long as you're passionate about it you know pursue mm -hmm. it and try podcast, we're not really ready either <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm impressed by the <laughs> so uh, you, you've been involved and are involved in different mediums Yes. Uh, within the art uh, realm, with uh, acrylics, pastels, chalks. Yeah. Um, so, which of those mediums do you feel the most creative with? Um, I think I'm going to have to say acrylics and um, chalk pastels. So, when I paint large and do more abstract artwork, um, it's like a full body experience because the motion of the movement, it's mm. almost like a bit of a dance. and. <laughs> I, I put paint in layers and marks in layers and I give myself time away from that piece. It sits in my studio so I can observe it at different times of the day and see what it needs. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of emotion that goes into that too. So it's the physical experience of having it come to life. And I may have one idea of what um, it'll look like, but by the time it's done, it surprises me wow. too. And I think the acrylic and chalk allows me to create the layers and the depth in the pieces when I work that size and in that mm. medium. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Well, speaking of different mediums, you have brought with you uh, some items <laughs> and uh, you're going to test the artistic abilities or lack of, of myself and Nilesh. So uh, what do you have in front of us here? Maybe you can talk us yeah. through this. So uh, I teach um, online wor workshops, so online uh, watercolor classes. And one thing I like to teach is that it doesn't matter if you can't draw, you don't have to be artistic to be able to start. With some really simple steps, you can enjoy the tactile experience of painting with watercolors. And I think in a technology-driven world that we're in right now, it's nice to be able to go back to some sort of tactile experience. So sure. if you've never painted before, we're gonna do something just really easy. We're just gonna play with color and have <laughs> you and Neelish, if you can join us. Okay. Absolutely. So what I have in front of us for those of um, your listeners who can't see what we're doing is I have just a dry watercolor palette. I'm just spraying it with water because with watercolor you need to activate the paint medium with water. Which so we're going to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> There's no rules. Whatever. <laughs> have more success with the brush in. Okay. So what you want to do just um, get a lot of water on that brush so I'm just swirling my brush in the water jar that's mm -hmm. not our drinking water <laughs> I've done that before with coffee for sure and then choose a color that speaks to you so whatever color you see on the palette here speaks to you just go ahead and just just lightly swirl the brush around load up that brush with color mm -hmm. and I like to use the palette sometimes just to get that that watercolor flowing, add some more water to it. I just got watercolor on your beautiful tablecloth. So does that Lucy, mean I don't have water? Or? <laughs> yeah, so go ahead and add more water to the brush. Oh, Perfect, not, and then don't color. tap it off. Go ahead and put your brush right to that watercolor puddle. And just really enjoy that saturation mm -hmm. and the color that you've been able to pick up. And then what we're going to do is we're just gonna make a mark. So then what I like to do is just show you by pressing down slightly on the page. You can just let that brush glide across the page just like that. Very nice. So that's just a nice 
loose line. And then if you load up your brush again, so I'm gonna put a bit more water and add this beautiful, it's like a, a maroony color for those who can't see. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to start from that line that we've just painted. We're gonna push down on the brush a little bit and we're gonna open up the belly of the brush and drag and release a slight bit. Nice, so I'm imagining just a stem or a leaf. We're gonna load Ooh. up that brush again. Okay. We're gonna do the same thing right beside that second line and we're gonna create a little bit of a leaf. Oh, I like that actually, Michael. Go ahead and do another one. Another? Yeah, go rogue. Put one right beside it. Beautiful. Neelish is going abstract, which is yes. fantastic. No, 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 no rules. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> if you to the brush, you can notice how much mm. wider of a stroke you create, but look at how beautiful the watercolor just pools. Thank so wherever you. there's water, <laughs> you're welcome. It's a um, complete accident, but thank beautiful. you. Beautiful. <laughs> so just go ahead and again, intuitively, just make some lines, see what happens and then enjoy what's happening on the page as the watercolor flows onto the page the cotton paper is absorbing that pigment and then as it starts to pool and dry you get this beautiful texture mm -hmm. which only watercolor can offer oh. which is um why it's my next favorite medium that i, I like to it's pretty leafy it's leafy yes i have not really often been described as leafy <laughs> Now. With the maple leaves, I guess you would be. Uh, to talk about Toronto maple leaves. Poor leaves. Mm. So you can even add a different color to it. Maybe I'll add, I'm going to see what this yellow looks like mixed in here. Yellow. And I'm just going to drop it in. Oh, <clears throat> Again, okay. it's experimenting and play. So sometimes it's just that initial, oh my gosh, I'm looking at a blank page and I'm intimidated because I've you know, I don't know what to paint and it needs to be amazing. Mm -hmm. And that's why through my classes, I like to talk about just experiment and play and whatever happens, happens. The most important thing is to explore, try, put that brush to paper and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Look at that. <laughs> Love it. See, and see how different they all are? Although we're right. painting together and I'm guiding you along. It's totally different. Look at how different they are. It's like our mind is taking us in a, on our own individual adventure here. I'm very uh, practical. <laughs> Ooh, I see that oh, I love that abstracted. It's almost... Um... You're just so positive about everybody. <laughs> and then I say, take a moment to see, look at how it's yeah. just pooling and drying. Mm -hmm. Watercolor really does offer that I'm gonna um, go back experience. To my world. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna do one more. Oh, that's very cool. I'm so again, how do you feel painting with the watercolor? Are you less, less intimidated now? I am less intimidated and it feels like an artistic release, uh, a release of ideas coming out on the paper. And just being open to see what happens, so yeah, being fearless. Exactly. As you said, the there are no rules. Of what sets your soul on fire? Mm -hmm. Who knows, you might take up painting now. I might. There we go. Yes. Look at how struck they are. <laughs> Fun, right? Wow, fabulous. So then just give it a swirl in the water, let those dry, and then we'll sign them and we'll auction them off. So we, we've, we've seen, we've heard, we've experienced the type of art mm -hmm. that uh, you're involved in, and now you've even created a book. Yeah, I have, have a book, book coming Tell us out. About what was the motivation behind writing a book and tell us about the book itself. Yeah, so um, a book is actually another thing that was always on my mind. I thought um, when I was a bit older, wouldn't it be great to be able to illustrate and write children's books? Um, I didn't know again what that looked like, but it was just something that I put out there. So I've always loved books. Again, I'm very tactile. So anytime I can open up a book, whether it's a sketchbook, a notebook or a book, I do a lot of um, art with vintage paper and okay. collage type style. Um, you know, so for me, books were just, I, I always have to have them around me. Mm -hmm. So um, last year, after teaching Watercolors Made Simple, which is one of my more popular classes, okay. I thought, you know, I'm ready to create a book format to help people with, 
being able to learn in a different way. So having another tool or resource, because I do teach a lot of artists, I have a lot of students that, when I say students, sometimes it doesn't do them justice. They're fellow artists who are looking to learn and to create art and sure. to grow their, their own passion. Um, so a book was always on my radar and last year I decided it was time to work on a book. So wow. I did a little bit of self-publishing, okay. um, which is really great. So resources again for artists just to help them uh, paint more. So it's a trace and paint book that mm. if you can't draw, it doesn't um, hinder you from being able to paint. Okay. And then I was approached by a publisher to um, create a book with them. So it's a wow. traditionally published book and it's called Watercolor Made Simple. And it is um, part instructional. It has 15 painting projects that we do. There are paper projects as well too, because sometimes you end up painting these beautiful pieces and you wonder what should I do with them? Mm -hmm. um, so I have a portion in the book that gives you some really fun paper craft ideas. Okay. Um, there's traceables and QR codes that will lead you to a video. So I'm really excited about it. So yeah. first traditionally published book, my parents, um, again, when I shared the news, I'm like, we're going to go to a bookstore when the book comes out and you'll be able to see so they can understand better what, what it is that I do. So, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Nikki, what can you, advice can you give to young artists? You've learned a lot, you've gone through a lot, you've experienced a lot. What advice can you give to young artists starting out? You know, what I say, and even to my kids, they're both in creative fields and I'm so excited to watch them and um, see them on their path, their creative mm -hmm. path is that if you have an idea and if you have a passion and you are dreaming about doing something, that's what you're meant to be doing. So again, going back to the quote of being fearless, if that's something you want to do, we're so lucky with technology that if you don't know how to do something, you can take online classes. I have students all over the world. You can take online classes with you know people who are successful doing what it is that you want to do. You can go on YouTube and find resources, listen to podcasts, you can figure out ways how to do something, even if the path isn't clear. Once you have that decision and that passion, mm -hmm. that's all you need because it may not be an easy path for sure. Creating life by design, I've hit lots of roadblocks and had many failures, but it's the learning through that process that then made me realize when I needed to maybe pivot a bit or what I needed to focus on more. So I would say, as long as you have a passion to do it, put your best work out there um, ask for help because there are lots of people who want to see everyone succeed, right? So, you know, ask for help, ask for guidance, and the road may not be what you planned, mm -hmm. but you will get there when when it's right and when the timing is right for you. Wonderful. And do it. <laughs> I mean, if, yeah, the world's your oyster. And you've got a lot of information on your website, yes. which is uh, www.lifeidesign.com. Yes the letter i design.com okay yeah and if people want to purchase your book uh where can they yeah, go yeah it's available that? worldwide so amazon big book retailers mm. um i hope it's on indigo soon they, <laughs> they still haven't had it listed i'm not sure why but right. um yeah Excellent. okay nikki it's yeah. time for that show time of the show we do rapid fire Okay, so question one, country music or rock music? Rock music. <laughs> Cake or pie? Cake. 100%. Say a word in Spanish. Hola. Hola, okay. dos uh, cervezas, por favor. <laughs> Aces. Chocolate or vanilla? Oh, sorry. Uh, chocolate, 100%. Star Wars or Star Trek? <clears throat> Neither. <laughs> that's honest, that's honest. Sorry, my husband's not happy right now. Dogs or cats or kids? No, <laughs> just dogs or cats? <laughs> dogs. Uh, have you ever worn socks with sandals? Outside gardening, maybe? Mm -hmm. I'm being honest. <laughs> what is your hidden talent? My hidden talent? I can curl my tongue. <laughs> oh, okay. Do I need to my see it. Uh, coffee or tea? Coffee. What is your go-to karaoke song? I don't say it. Um, what was that one? First I was afraid, I'm not gonna sing it. <laughs> Who sings it? First I was afraid, I was uh, petrified. Classic uh, karaoke. Then some, I, I know the song, but right? I, I can't, uh, yeah. I will survive. I will survive, that's okay. right, see? <laughs> Fantastic, okay, those are our rapid fire questions. Oh, they weren't bad, they were fun too. Yeah, you see, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> 
Well, once again, Nikki, thank you so much for joining us on this inaugural episode of Life Stories Markham. Thank you. It's been very enlightening and very informative. And to our audience, if you do have an idea uh, for a great story, an individual, uh, please let us know. Uh, contact us at ideas at lifestoriesmarkham.ca. Uh, if you'd like to sponsor us, uh, please get in touch with us at info at lifestoriesmarkham.ca. So whether you're listening to this podcast or watching it on YouTube, we ask you to please subscribe to the channel. Uh, this will ensure that you do not miss a single episode, including this one right here, which you can watch over and over again and enjoy it as much as you want to. And again, this program is produced by the wonderful Neelash Hathi at Neelash Hathi Media. And you can reach him at neelash.hathi at gmail.com. And all of this information, including all of our episodes, are available on the website with more information. The website is lifestoriesmarkham.ca. Thank you once again. Nikki, thanks to all of you. We'll see you next time. Okay. Well done. Right. Thank you. That was fun. Thank you. That Wonderful. was so fun. I'm excited for you guys.